whatever you want to say, ask, offer, um, you are welcome. Thank you so much, that was so beautiful. I think it's so important to acknowledge the fact that through body language, not only do we receive things, but we also express things. And I was raised Italian, so I talk with my hands all the time. Um, Thank you. But anytime that I feel sad, threatened, attacked, depressed, whatever, love is always, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the answer for me, reactively, that not only makes me feel better, um, but kind of dispels hate pretty quickly. Um, it's, it, you know, the saying where, you know, success is the best revenge. It's kind of like the same thing for me. Love is the best answer to hate. And I'm so happy that, like, to look at this room and see complete diversity makes me very, very, very happy. Um, I'm a humanist. I'm a gender anarchist. I don't want to be in any box whatsoever. So um, I think we can find commonality of the fact that we're all human beings. And at some point, we've all experienced both love and hate. But we all know how to love. I think we all want to love. We all want to receive love. So thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to say, Sharon, I love you. I love you. Thank you. you know, for that message. It felt so warm and, and compassion, and I felt the spirituality. And thank you for bringing this to us. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that I heard, which I've been aware of, is learning to be as compassionate with ourselves as we are with our friends. And I'm curious how you do that specifically, or if you have, I, I, I find that I can trash myself so quick and, and be so kind to, to people that I love. And so it's, I just, if you can elaborate or something, I don't know what you say to all that. But. Thank you. Um, it's very hard, and I'm still not that good at it, um, so I practice it, and I just, try to be gentle with myself when I fail in doing it. Um, so the chatter is always close to the surface. And the more I practice, the, the, the less often it comes through. I, I noticed that for myself, uh, taking really good care of myself helps. So I feel like I'm like an athlete. Uh, so the way that I eat, and I'm still learning how to eat in a way that's really good for my body. Um, I, I found that I'm allergic to sugar. Sugar feeds cancer, so it makes sense. And sugar is also, I don't care what they say, associated with alcoholism, uh, which runs on all sides of my family. The sugar problem and the alcoholism, and crazy. I got the crazy gene. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I've stopped eating uh, desserts. Like, I do fruit, but I, I had to let go of desserts because I noticed it was harder for me to behave. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so for me, it's like all those little details that make up a day, trying to make sure I get enough sleep, um, not over-caffeinating, but I got to get that calf, calf, you know. It's like I got to have those first two in the right way at the right time, but then more than that, it's not good. Um, so a lot of little things like that that have to do with everyday care. Um, and then I have, um, I had to let go of a lot of toxic people um, and toxic ways of working. And so it's all of that I think has helped me to just be more present and, and more compassionate inside and outside. Um, and then the thing that is really useful to, and to me um, that, that really kind of changes my blood chemistry is gratitude. So I, I focus on uh, what I'm grateful for and I have a lot to be grateful for. So that I find that to be very helpful because it, 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 it changes not only the blood chemistry but I feel like it cleans the eyes. Thank you. Um, well, thank you so much for your, uh, your offerings. 
Um, I just wanted to ask if there was a particular story or anecdote that you could share with us about how you came into community with other masculine women. Um, I know maybe for some of us, I know for myself, uh, I've had good times and bad times with my tribe. And, you know, at times I've known better how to connect with them and, and others, like right now, seems to be a tough time. Yeah. Uh, so I'm wondering, you know, how, how can we break down those barriers and those assumptions that we make uh, about each other and then that, that essence of, you know, masculine competition that we perpetuate in our own communities, how do we break those barriers down so that we can actually come closer together and so that when one of us is going through something that we can actually be there to support each other? Thank you, that's a great question. And I'd like to offer something, and then I also would love for people in the room to respond to that. I feel like we have a wealth of power and strength and knowledge here. Um, for me, a lot of it had to do with um, releasing my own toxic behavior. So when I was uh, wilding out and drinking and running the streets, I was running with people who it was hard to be um, healthy with. And so the interactions and the choices on all sides were really um, not good. Uh, so addressing my own unhealthy behavior and then also releasing toxic people from my life was, was part of it for me. Um, but I would love to know what other people would like to offer for this. And I know some of you young people got uh, the truth to share with us. So we would like to hear from you too, please. Yes. Um, you said something about uh, competition and, uh, well, uh, you said something about competition and um, I wanted to address that because I see it as very pervasive. Um, we've been using the word masculinity and for me it's something that I've seen that it seems like there's a lot of stereotypes attached to that and things that we often are trying to live up to. And as a part of some of our concepts about what it means to be masculine, I think sometimes we fall into certain traps. And one of those is being competitive and equating that with power. And if, if we can just be aware of that in ourselves, then sometimes when we, we start getting into those patterns with other people, we can maybe step back and just let them have it. It's not weakness. You're not acquiescing. You're just kind of letting it go by. And then you, that way you can kind of stop that dynamic. It doesn't always have to be a competition, you know. So I don't know. That's a strategy that people might want to think about. That's great. Is someone under 25 want to give us some knowledge on that? Yeah, you, um, okay, somebody. Okay, well, that's okay. You, <laughs> What's up, I'm 29. Um, well, I wanted to say thank you because um, I feel like I, everything you said really resonated with my stories in my multiple growth and identities. And I also want to say thank you to Q for that amazing introduction and for hooking me up with a volunteer. And Chris, I wouldn't be able to be here. I don't have any money. I think that having living with an illness and being a person of color and being a person of um, an alternative aesthetic, um, <laughs> fabulous nonetheless. <laughs> Um, makes it hard, harder in the larger community. And personally, I felt a lot of seclusion um, and isolation within the queer community because I'm so fucking fierce. Um, it's terrifying. It is terrifying. And you know what? I'm from New York, and I'm going to call that right now. Shit. And, and it's also been hard hard out here because when you are working through your dark moon and you have certain kind of anger and hostility towards everything, you know, when you're working through that dark that you were talking about, 
people don't offer you compassion or kindness. They just, it's like, ooh, do you have to be so political? Do your feelings have to be so messy? Um, and I say, you know, eat shit, you know, and like, and usually that doesn't go so well. But it is through that, also, thank you for helping me get here. <laughs> outside. Um, it is through that practice of love and meditation and um, linking body health with that sp spiritual health, health that it has helped me. Um, I don't feel like I have a lot of community right now, even though there are people here that I see that I love and they've shown me love through like real, real struggle. I mean, I've been in bed for four months. It doesn't look like it, <laughs> but I've been bedridden for four months completely alone, being just like, where is the community? Where is the healthcare access? Why did that doctor that is telling me that I'm not disabled, asking where I grew my breast, what? <laughs> How did you grow your breast, this woman asked me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know what to say. So honestly, fucking tons of inner strength. In, and um, thank you for talking about alcoholism. The serenity prayer helps me. I pray for courage and wisdom. And the third one, <laughs> what's the third one? If somebody can remind me to know the difference, the wisdom. So, and even though it's a small circle of friends, um, that, um, and slowly, I mean, for a long time, I think I held on to vanity as a way to get through pain and insecurity. Um, because when I finally learned that, like, I wasn't ugly, um, I got a lot of attention out, wiling out, right? And that was great until I felt completely used. Um, and, and being ill, having an illness that um, makes you really fucking ugly, and you can't even be in the sun, helps you let go of vanity and helps you connect with people that are willing to love you when you're messy and when you're pretty um, and when you, somebody gave you the menses. So, thank you. Thank you very much. I wanna also say that being here is, uh, is a great thing. You're, you're here, so, you know, yeah, yeah. And um, I, I would like to ask the organizers, are, is there a resource table or is there a mailing list or something that we can send resources out on? Okay. It's on the website. Yeah. Uh, also, the, the CDC website has a handbook that they published in 2010. It's the LGBT, it doesn't include the Q and the I, but it's an LGBT good effort to include all the issues uh, our community face and goes from um, transgender issues, uh, lesbian, butchers, uh, kids, suicide, everything our community is impacted. We, not, we don't have to forget that alcohol, tobacco, tobacco use, depression, aging alone, obesity, and other issues are impa impact our community for many reasons. Some of them are discrimination, lack of family support, uh, marginalization, uh, and many of those uh, issues we face in our health are triggered by all other social conditions that we have been targeted with. So if you are aware that you have a something going on with your health, be honest, look for professional support, look for professionals that have trained with uh, serving our community, be open and always ask your providers what's going on with you. Don't go and be silent when you go to the doctor. Go to the doctor when you feel it's needed and go to the doctor to your regular checkups. If you suffer of abuse, um, alcohol abuse, tobacco use, or drug addiction, look for help and support. Look into your local community. Look into your LGBT center. 
have a network of support among your friends, your neighbors, your family, anybody who can give you a hand. We are not alone, but if we don't talk about our health issues today, we will be aging alone, we will, we will be hooked into oxygen tanks, we will be uh, suffering strokes and heart disease, so depression, and we will confine to our own health issues. Thank you, that's very important. Um, and I also uh, want to encourage you all to read, um, to access, um, you know, our great writer, Sheree Moraga, many of the names that I mentioned. Um, and I'd be happy to send, uh, if you want, my email address is basically my name, sharon.bridgeforth at gmail.com. My cards are on the table. If you'd like suggestions for books, um, I'll send you what I know of. And um, I suggest that you all share resources, uh, book lists, uh, performance opportunities, like all, all the resources that we have, that we share them. And before you leave today, talk to someone younger than you and someone older than you that you don't know. Just wanted to add that if folks don't know that the Brown Boy Project just released a health guide that will yeah. address a lot of the issues that are coming up right now. And it's an amazing, amazing project. So you should really look at this book if you need a resource, it has a lot of different, it goes across health, not just in any one particular segment. And it's and, on the table out there, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, right on. They're 20 to $50 sliding scale, so yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, damn, I'm really loud. I said uh, all the authors will be at lunch tomorrow out here signing the books, and you can get a copy. They're 20 to 50 bucks sliding scale. Thank you. My name is Jay Marie, and I am the under 25. I say that because I don't kick it a lot of times, people who are under 25. But knowing that I am young, and I do have a, um, you know, an awareness that whether or not it's involved, like, and I've taken things from people who are older than me. I still have only been on this earth for a certain amount of time. And I think something that as a young person I can offer, um, something that I'm really learning right now is that, like you talked about, and I think, you know, it's a true love is the answer to like everything, right? But love looks so different for a lot of people. And like, I'm still learning what love can, like I feel like I was loved growing up amazingly, right? And I have a lot of support, huge network. I'm fortunate enough to be a brown boy from the early days. Like there's a lot going on for me that I feel really good about, but like, you know, love looks different, and it can, and that's okay, right? And I think if I don't know what, what you being loved looks like, I need you to tell me, you know? Like, and I need you to, and I, I'll tell you what it looks like to me. So, like, I think that's part of the conversation, and I hope tomorrow this is what happens, is, like, for the people who don't feel loved, I, don't, I can't tell exactly what, it is, what it's taking, what they need to feel loved. And so what I, what I would encourage, I guess, all of us to do is, like, use I statements, but, right, like, like... <laughs> But like, think about things in a way that like, you know, it's, not, it's okay that we're not all the same, but like, one, we have commonality, two, like love comes in different forms. So like, understand that the way you feel loved may not be the way someone else feel lo feels loved, and it's loving in itself to understand how someone else feels loved, and to like extend that understanding and to like ask them. If they're not, if they're not telling you, if you can tell they don't feel loved, be like, what's, what's really going on right now? What is it that you don't like about this situation? Like that, and be like really, really clear about it, that that's really what I'm asking. You know, like that's really what I wanna know, and I think, what we were talking about last night, like Erica said this in her words, um, sharing at the like the launch party, like the resources are in our community. Like, and doctors don't have to be professional practitioner in the in the hospital doctors, right? Like, I don't think people felt like we were going to go to church today or like the hospital today, but I feel like a lot of people were healed by you know by your words. So it's like the doctor doesn't have to be the one in the hospital. It can be somebody that you feel good about, that you feel close to, that you may know has had this experience. So like, and that may be how you feel loved if somebody takes care of you. So. Regardless, like I think we have to go after what different forms of love look like, not only for ourselves, but like fulfilling that for other people. I guess all the hating going on, that's what I took from the conversation. But um, and it happens in all communities, especially being, you know, a black woman. Um, we are really big on hating on each other. So um the <laughs> The, the only advice, because you can't really control anybody else's actions, you can't control their feelings, you can only control how you react to things. And I would just encourage people to understand that when you are being hated on or if somebody is coming at you like that, realize that it's something that they're dealing with personally. And instead of 
retaliating and being angry with them, um, chant for them or pray for them or whatever your, you know, whatever your um, spiritual guide is, instead of saying, you know what, she really made me mad today, she looked at me, she rolled her eyes, whatever, whatever, be like, she's probably going through something, and that is, you know, her personal issue with me, or, or his personal issue with you, or whatever the case may be, so instead of, if we can just think that, you know, that person might really be going through something, and it's really not me, it's the situation that they're going through, and I think if we can start there, it'll be easier for us to handle it. My mom always says, it takes two people to fight. It takes two people to argue. And if one person can back down or if one person can get to where they can get to a common understanding that it'll be a easier conversation to have, so. Hey, Journey, hold on to that microphone. Since we're in a black tradition, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby, yeah. I think she had a question. <laughs> uh, 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 if you would, uh, I'm gonna say a short little something and if you would, um, bless us with some okay. short voice, okay. give voice to, um, the thing that I also want to say, when I was in my dark night of the soul, my guru was five. <laughs> my friend's son, uh, my friend was a single parent and she needed help, uh, um, you know, with the babysitting and whatnot. And so I just spent a lot of time with my little friend and he just knew everything. And <laughs> they know everything, right? And um, it, was a, it felt good, it was service. You know Flo and Wesley, you know? Uh, it was service and that felt good. And then also it, it just really um, helped me. So I just offer that. All right, take us out. Thank you, you guys. It's like yesterday, I didn't even know your name. Now today, you're always on my mind. I never could have predicted that I'd feel this way. You are a beautiful surprise. Whatever it is that you came to teach me, I am here to learn it, cause I believe that we are written in the stars. And I don't know what the future holds, but I'm living in the moment. And I'm thankful for the person that you are, you are, you are. Thank you. <laughs>